Hi, welcome to Detours, Understanding Acquired Brain Injury. And of course, as you well recognize, our co-host, Lisa C. And we're going to be talking about um, something pertinent to family and kids with brain injury as her family series is related to. And something that's really important that unfortunately kind of gets missed oftentimes when, when a kid with brain injury comes home, uh, some of the needs that they have. And uh, some of the things related to families, relationships, and connections. Lisa, yes. welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Of course. It's a very important um, topic because a lot of times, you know, you'll have one parent that the child is very close to mm -hmm. and then the other parent not that they don't want to be but they don't know how to be right you know they care for the child yes but they don't have the connection that they should mm -hmm. and a lot of times that affects the child because then the child will think oh well he or she doesn't oh, care about me right and then, of course, you feel bad, you know, because you're trying to, you know, talk to the other parent to see what they can do to help remedy it, you know. Um, and a lot of times, well, this goes back to the research thing, believe it or not. Well. Cool. That the parent that they don't have the that the child does not have the connection with um, needs more knowledge mm. on you know the brain injury or whatever the case may be whatever disability that the child has because mm. that's very important because in that way they can talk to their child and understand and, you know, validate their feelings, you know, whatever the case may be. And that way the child feels that, you know, their parent loves them. I mean, they know they love them, but, you know, cares about them and wants to be in their life. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. But it's just getting that parent to understand what they need to do because a lot of times that parent may not even like they think they're doing the right thing mm. but they don't realize that they need to do just a little bit more right you know either hang out with the child mm -hmm. take them to lunch you know just have you know a day just with them Mm -hmm. and so you know, that, that would mean so much. Yeah, that that is an important suggestion, right? There's like like maybe like a you know father son or mother daughter or you know flipped around the other way, you know, it's a daddy daughter and mother son um, exactly. day or, or you know a weekend or whatever. Even if they're married, still, I mean, if you're together, still like a designated like day weekend, do something fun. You know, it's like obviously within constraints of the child's disability too. But even just time at the park or like, you know, just, just something like that. Cause. Yes. Um, and because with brain injury, traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. that's where you have the depression. That's where you have the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of it kind of goes into the mental illness part of it too. Yes. Yes. And, and that's true for kids with mental illness as well. I mean, and yes. a lot of our kids, um, a lot of our kids with traumatic brain injury, they do have diagnosable. Now, the trick is because many of these, many mental illnesses, um, they usually have a rule out for like brain injury or something like that. But uh, then you just call it like, personality disorder due to traumatic brain injury or due to and we discussed this in one of the earlier videos we talked about it is like personality disorder due to a medical condition traumatic brain injury with features of boom and it'll be like 
features of borderline personality or features of anxiety disorder, or, you know, anxious personality or, or uh, you know, antisocial or whatever. <coughs> and basically it's the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it just acknowledges that it derives from brain trauma, but it is still exactly the same and is treated the same. And so you need to approach our kids just like they have any other psychiatric illness. It is just that it is due to a physical alteration in the brain due to impact or due to cardiac arrest. I mean, kids can end up or have an accident at the pool or, you know, whatever, but it oh, is yes. still treated the same. And many of our kids, and here's something that I have brought up, um, many of our kids end up in the psychiatric hospital and are often missed that they have traumatic brain injury. And some of the medications that they're given need to be different. Um, treatment needs to be different, however, medication-wise. But the therapy is still the same. The cognitive therapy, maybe smaller groups, things like that need to be changed. Yes. But it is still the same cluster of symptoms. And the attention paid by families still needs to be the same. And so working together as a family. Um, and I want to touch on something else quickly here, and then I'll pin it back. Um, there's the idea of upstairs, downstairs parent. The upstairs parent does like the fun stuff. You know, they're the ones who go out for the weekend. They do that kind of stuff. And that's referred to as the upstairs parent. The downstairs parent does like the cooking, the cleaning, disciplining the kids, making sure the homework's done, stuff like that. The upstairs parent may do homework too sometimes, you know, like, like help them do their favorite homework mm -hmm. or whatever. But, and their role is more supporting the downstairs parent. But the advantage for that parent is usually they're more, um, they're the more popular parent. They're the kid's friend, which is not always oh, a goodness. good idea. And the downstairs parent has to do the hard work. And usually their relationship is kind of eh, not quite the same as the upstairs parent because they're the one. But when, when the chips are down, the kid usually goes for the downstairs parent. And when things are good, upstairs. And that leads to friction between parents. And when yes, it comes it to does. one of our kids, and you know, because, well, yes. to be blunt, I know you're the downstairs parent um, for a fact. Um, and that's tough. And you need to, both parents need to be on the same page with our kids because our kids need consistency because they're learning and, and they're still just trying to figure out who they are and they need a consistent message and both parents not only need to support the kid they need to support each other and so yes. that really adds to complexity you can't be doing the upstairs downstairs parent while they're recovering they need right. to be both downstairs parents and both <laughs> upstairs parents and supporting each other which really makes it hard and the kid generally has a lot of extra problems so you know absolutely and i would never think of that analogy but it makes so much sense i mean that's that's right out of like old old school psychology you know that that's more like that kind of thing with apologies you know it's just but there's definitely that division and when our kids come home they have those kind of like cognitive issues and they will generally turn towards a downstairs parent for support. Many times there are dads who are the downstairs parent because the kid has, you know, is in custody is, is custodial with the dad, yes. you know, due to certain reasons. And mom is more the upstairs. Although that's not the typical arrangement, but again, our kids learning issues and stuff and need to be more mm, behavioral behavioristic mm -hmm. as far as like, reward and you know like reinforcement we talk about behaviorism and irritability and our kids are prone to temper outbursts and a lot of like anger and irritability and it's also something we see with the personality disorders and the other psychiatric problems and again we see that because yeah. our kids basically are classified as having mental illness even though technically technically it's neurological although if you're kind of old, if you're new school or very old school in psychiatry, uh, neurology and psychiatry belong together, at least in my opinion. And I'm kind of old school and new school. But yeah, so whether it's a psychiatric illness or whether it is a brain injury directly, that's kind of the thing. And so, mm -hmm. sorry, um, go ahead. <clears throat> no, that that's very true. Um but, you know, it is so important also to listen to the child that is mm. having some difficulty having a 
keeping the relationship going with our parent, you know, and mm. and if the other parent, <clears throat> excuse me, can somehow give the other parent some help in that part of it to mm. get them to learn how to validate the child's feelings and just listen. Right. But also, and, and it's hard, especially if that parent doesn't really know, like, or they feel uncomfortable, you know, because they don't know what to say. They might say the wrong thing, you know, to the child, you know, if he's, he or she's having a hard time with something. And I understand that, mm -hmm. but you won't know until you try. Right. And it's okay to say the wrong thing. It's okay to say nothing, but it is important to at least be there. And this applies not only to kids, but to adults who are recovering from brain injury yes. or that are, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what you say. Certainly you don't want to provoke anything, but you don't want to be critical or make fun of or belittle the problem, but just be there. <clears throat> listen be there it's okay to say nothing just to listen um one of the techniques is what's called reflective listening and you'll hear a psychologist use this a lot so what i hear you saying is this and it's called mm. it's also called active listening and what it is is to repeat not the same words exactly but to say back what you think you hear and what it is, is checking for your own understanding. I hear you saying this, am I right? And it gives the other person a chance to correct it and to make sure you clean up like misunderstandings and oh, yeah. it's like, or reflect on feelings. What I hear is you're upset or you're angry about this. Um, you don't want to overdo it. Not no. every, but when you're doing work with some clinical psychology, whatever, we'll often ask and talk about for clarification. I hear that this is this is the key issue. And you're listening for like what it sounds like to you is what matters. And you want to use these in a therapeutic way that is to try and get information out and you know, target with those kind of questions to encourage, you know, and not too many. Again, it's like you're listening is your primary role, but these kind of ways of asking for what matter. Hey, are you saying this? Mm -hmm. um, I want to understand. And you need to make it clear that you're doing this to, so that you understand better. And so that's a good way to start out, especially if you don't know what the, and maybe they don't know either. And that's okay, too. True. Very true indeed. But these are some because basic... They might be upset, and then they're not even thinking about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And it gets all jumbled up. Our kids many times are upset for no reason at all. It's just some, you know, it's neurochemistry, and they don't know why. It's because their brains are... Mm. And let's, let's admit this, too. It's like, Sometimes it's got nothing at all to do with the brain injury at all. It's so just it's life. And they're just upset because hormones and hormones growing up. Uh, they're scared about, you know, the there's, you know, the school dance or whatever. They're worried about, you know, will people like me? Will they want to be with me? Will I be sitting alone? Mm, sometimes it just is. Mm. And if you have problems, you know, as the other parent who is maybe not as close, or maybe, to be honest, you you feel like the person who came home from the hospital, the kid who came home from the hospital, is a stranger now, um, and you're finding it difficult, then support the other parent. Support them, and then you seek help, too. It's okay to get counseling or therapy to deal with the changes. Absolutely. And that applies a bad to... Thing. It's okay. It is okay to feel uncomfortable. It's okay to feel that way. Um, brain injury changes not only the, the 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 survivor. It changes the family. It changes the family dynamics. It's okay um, to get help in dealing with it. It is transformative completely. And it's okay to say, I'm not comfortable. 
But what's not okay is to blame the victim or abandon the survivor. Um, Especially if they have borderline <laughs> personality trait. Mm. And that, that kind of thing can happen if they suffer brain injury. But others, too, even if they have some of the, like, if they seem sociopathic or whatever, it's not a choice. This has happened to them. Uh, there are techniques and things that can be done to help. Um, there are yeah. rehabilitative techniques, things like that. But it requires engagement of both parents. It requires yes. both to engage. And psychiatric problems as well as, you know, and so because it is one important. parent can't can't handle it all. No, they can't do it all. No, they can't. And so That's why they it need is... the other parent for support. Right. Yes, and they need Very to be on, on the same page too. Um, yes. uh, oftentimes, one will undermine the other too, and that's worse than no help at all. Um, so Very true. agreement for discipline and how you're going to handle this. What, tell, telling medical professionals too, but yes, you're right. It's like, and if you have a problem support, if you have a problem directly interacting with the survivor, with the kid, then help the other parent. Right. I mean, your own experiences, you know, it's like, I know with your own, it's not, she wasn't, she didn't suffer traumatic brain injury, um, no. but with long-term, you know, mental health issues, um, it's still the same thing, though. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very hard. And it's really hard to understand. You can understand what they're going through to a point. Because you're not in their head. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. I mean, you can empathize with them. But... You don't know exactly what they're going through on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just got to get the other parent to understand. Right. You don't understand all about it. Right. And that's the hardest thing. Structure, support. And as I said, then at the very least, you know, the other parent, any of our kids, be then supporting the other parent, being there to help them cooking, cleaning, you know, like making sure paperwork's filled out, scheduling for appointments, doctor appointments, you know, whatever. Then they can do that then and help. So a parent who oh, yeah. has a tighter connection then can spend a lot more time with the person, with the survivor. And then over time, then to try to build a connection as they work on how they feel and what they think and what they understand. Because I understand that it's a, a challenge. And like I said, it's like the kids are oftentimes they're misdiagnosed. They're misdiagnosed as having other problems when it's brain injury. And it looks like um, yes. ODD, opposition defiant disorder, learning disabilities, ADD, ADHD, all these other alphabet soup diagnoses. When mm -hmm. it is traumatic brain injury that they had a couple of years before, you know, they they were messing around there on the garage, you know, on the roof of the garage, they fell off. Or even, you know, they were smacking the head with baseball bat. Brother was messing around, didn't want to tell anyone. Whack, oops. It happens. And, but yes. the long-term effects look like something else. And we find that kids are not as resilient as we thought for brain injuries. That, in fact, in many cases, they come up worse uh, than adults because those neural pathways have not been connected and they end up getting reassigned for rehabilitative kind of those kind of functions. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, so working together and if you have aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, you know, other people, get them also on board to help. Yes. Very important. You know, because maybe one adult, you know, whether it's you know brother sister or uncle or grandma or the grandpa. parent can can handle you know with the uh, loved one that has the brain injury mm -hmm. you know whether you know if that you know if they have like aggression or if they're having problems like you know cognitively you know. Maybe the mother's better at 
right. the handling it than the father or any, you know, any of the relatives. Right. Maybe they had experience in some way, shape, or form. Yes. That's why it's very important to have, like you said, everybody on board. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The the most important everybody's thing everybody's happy. For that, um, just a, a note there is like everyone's got to pull together. You can't have one person deciding, no, they need pity instead. It's like, nope. Everyone needs to approach it the same because if they're going to get better, the message needs to be consistent. See, see our videos on dealing with irritability and aggression. You all need to approach handling like aggression and that kind of stuff consistently uh, because they'll know, you know, the survivor will learn whose buttons to push. Mm -hmm. uh, they are good at becoming manipulative. Um, very good at getting what they want, even if it's not what they need. Um, yes. even if it's harmful to them but if it makes them feel good again it's that mm -hmm. brain injury thing that frontal lobe thing bad judgment short term gain long term loss they're really not good at judging risks and harm and that kind of thing and if they know you're the one who's buttons to push that is who they will go for oh yes uh, everyone's got to present a united front Hmm. And they have to relearn, to, just like a, a bratty five-year-old sometimes, they know who's, a five-year-old knows exactly whose buttons to push. Oh, yeah, they start they, very young. Oh, heck yes. And so survivors are just the same way with that. They know whose buttons to hit and where, hmm. how, and when. It's exactly the same. It's the same with a lot of, of people with mental illness, too. They just uncannily know whose buttons to hit for what it's amazing and so oh, you've yes. all got to present yep <laughs> hmm. yepers absolutely boy, oh boy. <laughs> and so hmm. you've got to present a heavy united front on that one or walk yes. away if you know you're you're a sucker for it walk away on that one <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah Before sometimes they... everyone's got to walk away Yes. If they're aggressive or whatever. And you know you can let them be for a little bit. There are medications and things to help with aggression and, and stuff like that. But that is uh, that is something, like I said, I talk about that in one of my other videos. Right. Okay, so United Front. We yes, work together exactly. and support each other. And if you can't work directly with a kid who's a survivor, then help your partner who can. Preferably, though, both of you help if possible yes anything else to add uh no i think we pretty much covered everything okay great and i want to thank you and um you want again i want to say you know thanks i think this went well and if you guys have any comments below any suggestions any ideas any questions as always yeah. comments below and uh, please click like and subscribe. Share this with anyone you think may benefit. Uh, keep in mind, this also applies for regular kids and you know, other you know situations like that. Mental illness, obviously, um, as well as our kids and brain injury surviving and kids with. And next week we're gonna. Next time we get together, we're gonna be with this series. We're gonna be talking about. Um, when loved ones come home, when a spouse comes home, things to prepare for, to understand physical disabilities, emotional, mental, what to expect, and things you can do to help facilitate. Okay. Um, anything you'd like to? No, I think we covered everything. Well, I, th I think we did. And this is an important topic that's often missed. Um, you can always reach out to your doctors, psychologists, therapists, uh, members out there um, for further help. Yes. Okay. So... Thank you very much, and please click right. like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again, and have a good day. Bye.